All right, well, good morning, everyone. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do here in the next 15 minutes or so is talk to you a little bit about how CMR is used for valve assessment and then talk about scenarios where you might want to think about uh, using it. And what I'm gonna do is show example cases of uh, uh, patients that we get referred to the lab here. So before I start, let me, it's early in the morning, so I wanna make sure everyone's awake. Uh, let me get an idea of what your level of familiarity is with CMR. So how many of you have used CMR for valve assessment? Raise your hand. Okay, so we've got yeah, about 10%. Uh, how many of you at least are aware that CMR can be used for valve assessment, although you may not have used it yourself? Okay, about 25%. And then how many of you have no idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right, so uh, obviously what we're going to try to do here is let's start off with a case. Uh, so this is a 40-year-old woman who comes into the hospital with uh, new onset atrial fibrillation, and obviously, you know, the, the intern first test he's going to order is an echocardiogram. And here's, what the, here's the echocardiogram shown here, uh, the parasternal long axis view as well as the zoomed view of the mitral valve. And we've got now the apical views as well. And you can see there is uh, a jet of mitral regurgitation, especially if you look on this uh, three chamber view here. Uh, you can, but it's a very eccentric jet, and I don't think it's very well defined. Uh, and, and in fact, some, if we look at some of the, the Doppler uh, information, we can see that the Mitral inflow velocities are uh, somewhat elevated. I think this came out to about 1.3. Um, they try to do pulmonary vein uh, reversal flow here, but really not getting a very good pulmonary vein signal. But you will notice that the left atrium in this individual is dilated at 145 uh, mLs. So what do we have? So very eccentric jet, which can sometimes make uh, doing PISA difficult, as well as uh, vena contracta. Uh, the, there's not a clear flail that we can identify. We do see that the mitral inflow velocities are a little bit increased, and we have a left atrium that appears to be dilated. So this is an example of a case this patient was referred on for CMR uh, to really try to quantify the severity of the mitral regurgitation in this individual. Um, because again, the question, could that left atrial enlargement simply be due to AFib, or could the AFib, in fact, be due to left atrial enlargement from mitral regurgitation. So here's what I'm going to try to do, is walk you through how CMR assesses valve lesions, uh, and really two things we want to focus on. One is the ability of CMR to assess remodeling of the heart, and secondly, to quantify the severity of regurgitation. And then uh, after that, I'm going to go through some examples of where CMR could be used clinically uh, to quantify uh, valve regurgitation. So to start with, um, you know, how do we assess volumes and ejection fraction? So one of the strengths of CMR is that it's a uh, technique that doesn't really require geometric assumptions. So we actually acquire sequential short axis slices from the base of the heart to the apex of the heart. And these are typically done every eight to 10 millimeters apart so that there's no gaps in between. Uh, and then the technologist or the fellow or the attending whoever happens to be uh, stuck with the duty that day, uh, will actually go through and just contour the endocardium for systole as well as for diastole for each individual slice. So again, that means there's no geometric assumptions that are required. And from that, we're able to get a, a fairly uh, reliable and reproducible measure of end diastolic and end systolic volume. From that, you can compute stroke volume. And also from that, you can compute the ejection fraction. So here's the uh, images for this patient. And again, this is typically a non-contrast examination that can take about 10 to 15 minutes to acquire. Uh, and, and if I show you this, these images here, you can see, you know, obviously on the CMR, we can see the mitral regurgitation jet. Uh, the left ventricle here certainly looks like it's dilated. And the ejection fraction looks a little bit on the sluggish side. Um, and here's what the numbers came out to. So the LV end diastolic was actually quite big, 331 mLs. Uh, with a stroke volume of 176 mLs and an ejection fraction in this patient of 53, which again by CMR, really 56 or 57 is kind of the lower limits of normal. So this would be considered a uh, mildly reduced ejection fraction. So we've got uh, a significant LV dilatation, mild LV dysfunction, and then let's talk about how we do regurgitant uh, severity uh, quantification. So there's two things you need to know. One is I showed you how we compute the stroke volume of the left ventricle by contouring the endocardial borders. In addition to that, there's a technique called phase contrast CMR, 
which you can think of as equivalent to your Echo Doppler. Uh, but the difference is, in this case, we would actually do this perpendicular to the vessel that we're interested in interrogating. So in this case, we're actually interrogating the ascending aorta, and by placing an imaging volume uh, here in the ascending aorta, we are able to then, using this technique, derive two sets of images. The left set of images here, what we call the magnitude image, shows us the anatomy. So it allows us to see whoops, where the aorta is. And the right set of images here actually encodes velocity within every, every given pixel throughout each phase of the cardiac cycle. And then if we draw an ROI and then integrate the area underneath this, we're actually then able to derive the total volume of flow that's going across this aorta for one cardiac cycle. And in this example case, it was, it was 93 mLs. So the way that we would then compute the mitral regurgitation is simply by solving this equation, which is to say the amount of blood that this ventricle is ejecting out minus the amount that's going forward must be the amount that's going backward. Now, obviously, if there's an intracardiac shunt such as a VSD, that may make things a little bit more complicated. But in the absence of a shunt, this is the basic methodology that we would util utilize. And this is what we call the preferred way to uh, assess mitral regurgitation. The advantage with this technique, since it's purely volumetric based, is that it really doesn't matter if the degree of mitral regurgitation changes throughout the cardiac cycle, as in the uh, myxomatous case, as Bill showed. Uh, if it's a very eccentric jet, it really doesn't matter because this has nothing to do with trying to image at the location of the jet. And also, if you've got multiple jets, it really doesn't matter as well, because this is just going to give you an integral of the total volume uh, of reverse flow. So in this example patient here, we said that the LV stroke volume was 176 mLs, but the amount that was going forward across the aortic valve was 93. So by simply doing the math here, we can see there's a huge amount of reverse flow, 83 mLs of mitral regurgitation. And then the fraction is simply taking the 83 and divided by the mitral inflow, uh, which gives us essentially 47% uh, regurgitant fraction. So by CMR, this would clearly be a case of severe uh, mitral regurgitation. And so, let me skip forward here. Oops. Um, we've got basically severe MR with severe LV dilatation, an end diastolic volume of 331. And then by CMR, we actually got a very large left atrium as well, in fact, 283 mLs. So all of these things are <coughs> concordant with this patient having severe mitral regurgitation. And this patient actually went on to Dr. Lowry, who operated on her. Uh, and then she's, you know, this was a case from about a year ago, and she's doing very well now since then. Uh, this is a table with multiple studies, which I'm not going to bother to go through each individual study, but uh, there's a couple that I do want to highlight. And one is uh, a, a study that came out a couple years ago, which looked at the ability of CMR to predict reverse remodeling. So you have a patient with mitral regurgitation. The severity of mitral regurgitation at baseline on your CMR scan seemed to correlate pretty tightly with the magnitude of, of uh, reverse remodeling or reduction in LV and diastolic volume that occurred after mitral valve surgery. And then another study, and this is from a, a group out in England, uh, where they looked at a series of uh, over 100 patients with mitral regurgitation that were asymptomatic at the time of enrollment and then follow these patients to try to identify if there's certain CMR features or criteria that could predict an adverse outcome. Now, the adverse outcome that they were looking at here was obviously either death or need for uh, uh, mitral valve surgery. And what they found was really three parameters that seemed to predict. Uh, one was a regurgent fraction by CM or regurgent volume by CMR of greater than 55 mLs, really discriminated very nicely between those that did quite well over uh, almost seven years of follow-up versus those that had an adverse outcome. Uh, a mitral regurgent fraction of more than 40% uh, seemed to be associated again with patients that are either going to have a bad outcome or need surgery. Uh, and then obviously 50% uh, identified an even uh, uh, more significant group. And then lastly, uh, an LV end diastolic volume at baseline, an index volume of greater than 100 ml. So again, if you've got a large volume of regurgitation, a high fraction of regurgitation, or evidence that it's leading to remodeling of the left ventricle by causing LV dilatation, these were the patients that subsequently went on to either have a bad outcome or need mitral valve surgery. Um, and then lastly, let's go through and just kind of highlight some example cases or example scenarios 
where, you, where people here are typically referring a patient for CMR. So obviously, I think the, the, the first and very simple case is if you have suboptimal quality echo images. You know, that's obviously clear. Uh, that can be either due to obesity, due to lung disease, or for a variety of different reasons. Um, also, I think it's important to keep in mind that when you, you want to see concordance between your clinical history and your physical exam, between the, the 2D uh, uh, echo features as well as the spectral Doppler features. And in scenarios where there's a discordance between these, where you hear a loud murmur, but you don't see a very big jet, uh, where you see what looks like severe MR, or a very large jet, but in fact the ventricle doesn't seem to have remodeled at all, whenever there's a discordance, that's a scenario where you may want to think about referring a patient on for CMR. Obviously we showed this example case already of a very eccentric jet where it can be hard to, to assess. Uh, another example, as is, is Bill already showed us, is a patient who has myxomatous disease uh, where there's prolapse and there's really a changing degree of mitral regurgitation. So if you look at this, early systole, the size of the jet is very small. The amount of regurgitation is not much, but in late systole, you've got a very, very large amount of mitral regurgitation. And so again, with CMR, you're able to get an integrated uh, uh, volume of the total uh, amount of flow, of reverse flow that's occurring throughout that cardiac cycle. Um, another example scenario is when you have actually mixed disease, so when you have both mitral regurgitation and aortic regurgitation. Uh, and the reason for that is because the aortic regurgitation quantification is done by simply using that phase contrast in the ascending aorta and measuring the direct reverse flow that happens uh, above the valve level. And you can compare that to the forward flow across the left ventricle. And so that essentially uh, allows you to quantitate MR irrespective of, of degree of uh, aortic regurgitation. So to wrap up, you know, what are scenarios where you want to think about uh, potentially utilizing CMR? I think obviously when you have uh, suboptimal quality echo images, when there's a discordance between the history, physical 2D, and Doppler findings, when you have very eccentric regurgitation jets, when you have non-holosystolic uh, mitral regurgitation jets, and when you have multiple mitral regurgitation jets. And then lastly, the, the other areas, I think, uh, are really even when you have a good assessment by echo for the severity of the regurgitation, but you want to get a, a better handle on the magnitude of remodeling of the ventricle. Uh, because again, CMR is very good at quantitating volumes, ejection fraction. Uh, and then also myocardial viability assessment by CMR, which I think was touched on yesterday. Uh, uh, you know, CMR is an outstanding technique for being able to visualize scar within the myocardium. Uh, and, and when that's a question, especially in these secondary MR cases, uh, those are also examples where CMR could be useful. So thank you for your attention.